All right, so it's Jeff here back again with our video. So today I will be talking about um, the whole Russian Ukraine situation. Um, I know that this video is going to be a day late because I injured myself today, uh, fell down a couple of stairs, hurt a little bit of my back. I'm going over to a clinic or a hospital to get it checked out um, in the morning. Uh, but right now it is 1 a.m. Um, and it's on the 24th. So I'm going to be one day late, but I'm going to still get this video out because I kind of want to get this video out as soon as I can. And I kind of want to be missing on um, my weekly uploads either. So anyway, let's talk about Russia and Ukraine. All right. So anyway, um, for people who don't know what happened with the whole Russia uh, versus Ukraine situation, uh, Russia and Ukraine basically having this sort of uh, possible World War Three situation going on, uh, and of course with U.S. kind of also trying to step in onto the, into this uh, situation, Germany is also trying to step in on this situation as well. Uh, so for people who are unaware, um, the Nord Stream Two uh, is currently being halted by uh, Germany, and U.S. is also coming in to stop um, the Nord Stream Two as well. Um, this Nord Stream Two gas pipeline basically. Is this, um, I think it was $12 billion or $13 billion for them to create this gas pipeline from Russia all the way to all the other European countries, basically supplying them with gas. This project is going to be put on hold um, as because how Germany is going to be halting it and also US is definitely going to be halting it as well. Right, so what Biden actually said, um, what Biden basically said yesterday, well, basically 24 hours ago, okay, uh, he actually decided to uh, put on more sanctions to uh, basically stop the uh, Russians. So, uh, first of all, he's going to be putting more sanctions on the uh, sovereign debt. Um, so, for people who basically are holding on to US Treasury bonds, it will be harder for them to sell um, for Russia. Okay, because we all know that Russia is definitely going to be holding on to treasury bonds, uh, US Treasury bonds. Well, a lot of countries basically hold US Treasury bonds. Uh, because it's one of the safest uh, treasury bonds for you to hold on to it. And if um, right now what the sanctions uh, would allow uh, them to do is basically um, bottle, just basically just stop, uh, just put a cap on the uh, treasury bonds being sold out from Russia. So if Russia want to sell it on open market, they would not be able to do so. Uh, this actually uh, started to be in effect, uh, in effect since uh, yesterday. So uh, that means Russia would now be unable to sell um, the treasury bonds um, in the free and open market. If they do want to sell their treasury bonds, they will have to possibly go and sell it on um, dark pools, essentially, for them to either be cut down for a discounted rate or possibly get getting destroyed by the price by the uh, buying party. So that's uh, some of the sanction that uh, US is trying to do as well. Another thing is also US is also trying to um, bring in on the fact uh, that all the rich people um, in Russia, so for them, they are basically just um, limiting their purchasing um, power in the US, basically. So because all these rich people definitely have assets in the US, and because of this, they are trying to uh, put a, some sort of a limit on those rich people. And the whole point behind it is because rich people basically have um, power over politics to a certain extent. And how this um, all would come out to be is because if these rich people get pissed off that they are they are being affected because of this whole possible World War Three, they are going to be, you know, uh, piss, piss bitching on um, the um, government and the government would de definitely have to do something in the future because they don't want to be pissing off the rich, uh, richest family in uh, in Russia. Otherwise, they, it will be harder for them to run their government in the future. That sort of thing. So that's kind of what US is trying to go for. All right. So before Biden actually came out to talk about this entire invasion situation, um, we actually considered that this uh, the invasion for Ukraine would only be considered as an invasion when tanks roll out. However, when Biden actually came out yesterday. Biden straight up just say, uh, consider it. This is considered an invasion into Ukraine, and Biden is going to take this seriously. Okay, so this is a pretty good thing, uh, which is what we also saw in the spy. We also saw in the general market yesterday after Biden um, speech happened at about three thirty a.m. I think our market basically tried to uh, go back up a little bit, but of course 
uh, people start to sell on the news that you know Biden is deciding to do something about it, and you know prices basically just have the standard price movement and such. Um, however, something that was uh, quite interesting that also happened was because Russian embassy um, personnel, uh, you know, aka the, the diplomats, the Russian diplomats, were actually leaving Ukraine, which is I think the biggest uh, situation here because it is a little bit different when we are talking about how if the U.S. diplomats is going to be leaving Ukraine. If you talk about Ukraine um, diplomats that are trying to get out of the country, that kind of thing. But today we are talking about Russia's uh, diplomat leaving the uh, leaving Ukraine itself, uh, which means that there is a possibility that they have the insider information that there would be an all-out war. So I do want to put it uh, out here right now, as transparent as I am. I think I gave you guys um, a percentage base of like a 90% chance that we are not going to be going into World War Three. Uh, currently, I do think that we are a little bit lower now. I would say like 70% or so because with what Russia is doing right now, we're not, we are not really certain what Russia would actually pull off from this. Like, as I said before, I do not really see what Russia gets to... Um, I don't see what Russia gets to uh, get off from this war. I know that this is something to do with the NATO agreement. But even then, I'm not very sure what, what is Russia's end game here. Um, and of course, I do not see what US will want to do either because I don't think US want to treat this as another Afghanistan situation where they basically ends up um, putting their troops there for another 13 years. So right now, I think that it's going to be a very iffy situation for all the countries that's going to be affected. I think Ukraine, uh, you know, my heart goes out to the people in Ukraine. I think it's going to be very hard for them you know, with like impending war situation at all times. I'm not sure if a missile is going to fly over your head at any time, any point of time. I think that's going to be um, the worry and concern that I have for the people in Ukraine. But yeah, I think um, that's the kind of the update that I do have for the entire Russia versus Ukraine. Of course, my channel, I do want to talk about more on the uh, macroeconomic economic side of things and how the stock markets have price movement price movement and such. So I would like to keep it uh, more uh, subjective where we actually talk more about the price movement of the market. But I can tell you, if the war do shows up, if war happens, you know, your WTI, your Brent oil is definitely going to be going up. Like I said before, the commodities, especially with your al aluminum, your nickel and your wheat, uh, those are the commodities that will be affected, especially for those uh, commodities that is easily attained from Russia and Ukraine, aka aluminum, nickel, and wheat, those commodities will definitely go up in price because those uh, supply chains will definitely be affected as well. Of course, at the same time, you also see um, other other stuff that goes up in price, such as your gold prices. You also see prices such as your uh, copper, your um, copper, and also um, Wood, uh, wood prices. So yeah, I would assume that a lot of commodities would actually go up in price, especially if a war do break out. Uh, you also have to take, take into consideration of rebuilding um, some parts of the country and that would also uh, have some form of uh, price uh, movement on the uh, commodity side of things. Of course, if we want to look over at the cryptocurrency side of things, um, currently, Crypto Bitcoin uh, at the time of recording is at $38,000, going to about $39,000 or so. Uh, I'm not very, very bullish on uh, cryptocurrency as of now. Um, in this short term, of course. So for people who are bullish in um, crypto in the long term, if you do intend to buy the dip, continuously try to find your buy entry at every point of time. Um, try to continuously buy in if you can. Right now, I do not really have as much purchasing power for me to really do a lot of buying in uh, into crypto or stocks, which is why I've also been talking about this every single trading day uh, when during my news covering, which is I'm not buying anything, I'm not selling anything. I'm just going to be doing an option strategy for me to earn some side income from this um, market trend. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of it for uh, for the whole entire Russia, Ukraine situation, or at least until now. I'm not sure what's going to happen, uh, but I think my stand would still be the same, which is I'm not going to buy anything or sell anything until something's absolutely certain. 
uh but yeah you know that's kind of gonna be my step right thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys hopefully tomorrow uh but